Well, that's what you see is what you get, pal. <laughs> well, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the grounds of the U.S. Naval Academy in Annapolis, Maryland. I'm Jeff McCreese. I'm the deputy director of the Stockdale Center for Ethical Leadership. It's a great pleasure to uh, spend a few minutes with Ensign Joshua Walton, who has spent the summertime with us here at the Stockdale Center, working on a bibliography of Admiral James Stockdale, his personal and professional papers, and that of some of his uh, colleagues. Uh, in February 2023, we will commemorate, we'll mark the 50th anniversary of the return of the bulk of our uh, Vietnam POWs. And as we draw closer to this milestone, uh, the Stockdale Center in Annapolis continues to receive a number of requests for locations of where they can learn more about the Admiral and the other POWs. And noting this, the director of the Stockdale Center, uh, Dr. Joe Thomas, uh, suggested that we try to invest some labor into a comprehensive collection of the location of where all these sources are. Um, every summer after graduation, the Stockdale Center uh, has the benefit of uh, the laborers for a few months of recent Naval Academy graduates as they're awaiting uh, their follow-on training. And this year, noting the, the job that we were attempting to do in terms of the, the archival research, uh, we contacted the history department and uh, asked what uh, graduates they had up from their honors program. And we were uh, thrilled to find that uh, Josh Walton, uh, a history honors major who was very highly recommended from the history department staff, uh, would come over and help us out. So um, before we turn it over to Josh, we'd like to, to welcome uh, several people who are here with us. Uh, uh, Vice Admiral Sean Buck, the superintendent of the U.S. Naval Academy. Uh, members of the Stockdale family, uh, professional librarians and archivists from across the country, and members of the U.S. Naval Academy Foundation, whose donations support much of the work that we do at the Stockdale Center for Ethical Leadership. And do please feel free to uh, hang around for a few minutes after the end of Josh's comments, uh, where he'll entertain uh, questions about the work that he's done. So with that, uh, it's a great honor to turn it over to Ensign uh, Josh Walton. Josh, the floor is yours. Thank you, Dr. McCreese, for the very kind introduction. Uh, good afternoon, Vice Admiral Buck, uh, the Stockdale family, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, other distinguished guests. Uh, my name is Joshua Walton, and I recently commissioned with the great class of 2020. I served selected submarines and I'm in the process of checking out from the Naval Academy as we speak. Uh, I actually report in Charleston on Monday for a nuclear power school. I could not be more grateful to the Stockdale Center for the incredible opportunity I had this summer. Despite coming from a background of studying the sociocultural history of the Arctic submarine and uh, the history of science and technology, I was able to leverage the toolbox and archival navigation skills I learned in the Honors History Program. I was able to run free and contribute to a slew of multidisciplinary projects, this being one. Uh, from history to nuclear power is going to be a, a, a change of pace, to say the least. <laughs> Historians in nuclear power, we, ha we happy few. But um, for those outside the Naval Academy bubble, the Stockdale Center prides itself as a valuable resource for the Naval Academy at students. It aims to empower leaders to make courageous ethical decisions. The center could not have a finer model as its namesake than this most distinguished graduate of the Naval Academy. And while Stockdale was a man of unsurpassed courage and integrity, who clearly understood the gravitas of a leader's moment of ethical decision. So this week, we commemorate more than one anniversary, not a take away from this somber afternoon, but uh, it is rather coincidental that 55 years ago today, this past Wednesday, uh, marks the date when Commander Stockdale forcibly ejected from his A-4 Skyhawk over the skies of North Vietnam. Uh, he was subsequently captured and brought to the infamous Hoa La prison, um, where he would remain for the better part of a decade. Um, as the senior Navy POW in Hoa La, uh, Hotel Hanoi, uh, Stockdale maintained loyalty and military discipline among the POWs. Through a sophisticated TAP code, the POWs were able to organize resistance against interrogation, torture, and forced confessions. Stockdale reflected that our very fiber and sinew were the only weapons at our disposal, and I, I think we used them well. So as Dr. McCreese mentioned, to deal with the surge of research inquiries to the 50th anniversary of uh, the Vietnam POWs released in February 2023, uh, my work was born in the summer of 2020 amidst a pandemic um, as a temporary military assignment. So my role as a fresh limited ensign was to pull together historical information so that the Stockdale Center could better fulfill its vision to be a director, directory and repository of all things Stockdale. So the Stockdale Center takes the name Stockdale liberally to include equally his wife Sybil, other POWs, and the National League of Families of POWs. They're all heroes and deserve study in their own right. 
Prior to the summer, the Stockdale Center did not have a systematic approach to collecting materials or promoting POW history. Frankly, we didn't even know where there were and weren't papers, uh, apart from the Naval War College uh, up in Newport, Rhode Island. I discovered that we could use our unique position at the cross-sections of professional networks, military, and academia, and apply it to Stockdale history. With a river rotating network of fellows, we have the potential for a tremendous amount of soft power, if you will. Both Admiral and Civil Stockdale papers are split around the country, and uh, previously there's no master guide to the papers or his personal life, um, besides his books and uh, the occasional short biography. And it may be surprising considering the Admiral's prominence, but uh, if all the historians in the room know, um, the discipline has a tendency to dismiss recent events and uh, people as political science. Um, Civil Stockdale and the National League of Families have also attracted shocking little attention. Uh, Miss Heath Hardage Lee, who, who might be in this call, um, wrote a book called The League of Wives, and that's about all that's out there. Um, these factors combined with the slow declassification of Vietnam POW materials and Vietnam records in general, and it meant that a guy was never assembled. Fortunately, consolidating materials uh, in one location isn't much of an option, um, so an ever-evolving roadmap is probably our best course of action to uh, finding out where all the papers are, and, and what a better time with this approaching anniversary. So I'll start with what I did this summer, and uh, my mission was dual-pronged, It was, and it was by no means traditional history work, uh, but it was more a project to make the Stockdales accessible for scholars. The first prong was to wire a network uh, using the Stockdale Center, a router, if you will, uh, source to archives, libraries, historical societies, and museums. Second, I uh, was to survey material at these locations, and if possible, to bring back scans concerning the Stockdales to the Naval Academy and store them in a digital repository. Now, COVID and safety policy is sometimes... Uh, frustrated my tricks, but it's uh, safe to say the Stockdale Center is in the right direction. Um, I was able to travel the country digitally, of course, from Coronado to Kansas to Newport. This summer, I've come up with two tangibles, and but arguably more important was a replicable method to approaching Stockdale history and Vietnam POWs at large. Uh, the tangibles are currently works in progress due to be updated each summer by a new set of uh, TAD officers or by whomever is uh, deemed qualified. Uh, they are by no means complete. Um, the first of which is a 4,500 word research guide uh, outlining my experiences this summer from a first person point of view. I've included my annotations, uh, such as problems I've ran into, my points of contact, and summaries of the material I uncovered. Uh, it's directed at amateur historians or even honors history midshipmen interested in pursuing the Sockdales or maybe grad students, uh, just a plug for a potential project. Um, the second of which is the Stockdale Center Historical Repository, which will soon be uh, um, deposited in Nimitz Library and uh, open for scholars. So first of all, let me lie out why it's worth studying Stockdale's life and not just his time in Vietnam. So before all the historians get too uppity about great man, history, and, and the like, let me explain. Um, Admiral Stockdale is not only a war hero, but truly a renaissance man in his own right. Um, additionally, the ethical basis that made him the hero he was did not happen overnight, a saying we hear many times in Loose Hall and with the honor program at the Naval Academy. For these reasons, a slew of disciplines could benefit from studying his life. Um, from ethics, law, and history, to political science, psychology, film, and even theology. On top of it all, his life is just a good story. Um, for example, we have a, a documentary coming out from Three Penny Films uh, titled uh, Return with Honor, which heavily incorporates the Stockdales. Um, in recent years, the Stockdale paradox in particular has garnered uh, attention, and the man's ideas and his experiences uh, just make his study irresistible. However, I don't think it's necessary to further justify why we should study Admiral Stockdale, or we, we wouldn't be here today. So let's dive into this thing. Uh, we'll start with um, a, a brief summary of his life and before you can understand where to find the materials. So let's dive into it. Uh, Stockdale's life can be broken down into five distinct periods from a, from a researcher standpoint. Uh, that would be his childhood, early military career, time in captivity, post-captivity, and his political career. And the materials from these different eras vary wildly in medium, location, and classification level. Um, and familiarity with uh, Stockdale's life is essential prior to conducting research. So I'll, I'll run through a, a brief biography. Um, so we'll start with Abington, his, uh, his hometown. Um, he was a classic scholar athlete. He graduated from Abington High School in Western Illinois in 1942 as a multiple letter winner, dramatist, and honor society president, like uh, many midshipmen here. Um, before attending the Naval Academy of the class in 1947, he attended Monmouth College and Knox College. So he was not a, a direct, as uh, the academy calls them. So he graduated with Jimmy Carter in the class in 1947, participated in all sorts of ECAs, uh, extracurricular activities while in midshipman. He was a member of the Thursday night uh, football squad and ultimately finished in the upper quarter of his Naval Academy class and um, 
at the time, after World War II, all officers commissioned as a surface warfare officers before they went on to their different pipelines, such as submarines or pilot. And uh, then he went to Pensacola after the years on, on the ships and ultimately became a test pilot. So after he served in several squadrons, he reported to Stanford University in 1960 for a Master's of International Relations. And it was during these years that the philosophy picked uh, Stockdale's interest. Um, shortly after completing his degree, Stockdale was given command of a carrier wing, where he may have applied some of these concepts. In August 1964, he was a part of the Gulf of Tonkin incident, which is uh, uh, an escalation point for the United States in the Vietnam conflict. Uh, Stockdale even attested he never saw the enemy. One year later, in September 1965, Stockdale was taken as a POW. To deal with the unique psychological challenges of Hanoi, Stockdale drew heavily on his philosophical studies. This culminated in September 1969 for an incident where Stockdale was awarded the Medal of Honor for deliberately inflicting a near-mortal wound to his person in order to convince the captors of his willingness to give up his life rather than capitulate. Becoming uh, president of the Naval War College in 1977 after his release, he was remembered for voluntarily balancing administrative duties with, with teaching, breaking uh, precedent. The Stockdale course, or Foundations of Moral Obligations, continues today at the Naval War College in his image. Dr. Thomas Gibbons, who, who provided tremendous help and is in this, in this call and is the current course coordinator, um, is a, a, a product of the Stockdale Center History's network in action. After he uh, became a Stockdale became a research fellow at Hoover Institution. After a brief stint as uh, the president of the Citadel in 1979, Stockdale became heavily associated with Stoicism, Epictetus, and the Enchiridion. Stockdale tied his publications back to Vietnam, such as in his hallmark works, um, Thoughts of a Philosophical Fighter Pilot and Courage Under Fire, um, three or four other publications uh, during his time. But Stanford is where Stockdale finished his career after 12 years and uh, his presidential run. Unfortunately, in 1992, as a vice presidential candidate on uh, Ross Perot's ticket, um, he had a debacle in a debate, um, mostly due to us not having enough time to prepare and not being familiar with the television medium. And uh, he came across as inarticulate and confused, the opposite of the man we all know him to be. So we'll now take a look at some of my tangibles, uh, the first of which being a research guide. So now I recognize not everyone in the room is a historian, and frankly, even if you were, uh, there'd be no point sitting here and reading strings of arbitrary record groups. Um, so I think it's better to give a summary of the highlights and prospects of the critical repositories across the country. Uh, I'm now attempt to screen share the Stockdale Center Research Guide, if you'll give me a minute, please. Ma'am, uh, Major Sanchez, um, my, my browser is, appears to be uh, not responding. Uh, if you would be able to pull up the, uh, the PowerPoint and share it, please, ma'am. I apologize. I have to restart the presentation. I'm pulling off right now.
Josh, I can take over from here. All right. Dr. McCreese, I'll take over. Okay, Josh. All right. So are you attempting to, yeah, percent. Okay, the PowerPoint is up. All right. Um, so now that, uh, sorry for the uh, um, technical difficulties, but um, now this is open. Um, Dr. Cruz, could you, uh, next slide, please. So now that it is finally open, uh, you'll see my uh, research guide is organized uh, chrono semi-chronologically uh, through Stockdale's life, starting with the available materials in his hometown of Abingdon, Illinois, and ending with his fellowship at the Hoover Institution. It is compiled into an easy to use table of contents. Um, so let's dive into what, what actually is out there, what kind of sources and documents are out there, and uh, we'll work our way through this guide. Next slide, please. So Abington is a, a small town in Knox County, Illinois, that uh, Stockdale received his uh, foundations in pretty much every sport or extracurricular activity you can think of. Um, with the help of a local, Miss Carol Grazer, who's in the audience, uh, I was able to digitally feel around. I was able to build a link with the Abington Historical Society who had a copy of Stockdale's high school yearbook. I was able to establish a link with the librarian at Monmouth College where Stockdale attended before the Naval Academy and uh, gather pictures of a local Stockdale exhibit at a small VFW post uh, in nearby Galesburg, Illinois, to the north. And of course, my journey had its dead ends. Uh, most of those Stockdale grew up with are, have since passed on. As a Baptist, I know what value a uh, fellowship can have in preserving memory. Uh, unfortunately, we discovered that Stockdale's childhood church had been raised. Uh, coincidentally, Stockdale's cousin, Robert Dunlap, a uh, Marine Corps officer, was also awarded the Medal of Honor. He was also from Abington, so there must be something truly special about this little town. Next slide, please. The next place I'll discuss is Annapolis itself, which is uh, of most interest to midshipmen uh, through the Naval Institute and the Nimitz Library. This is the most accessible location for midshipmen, obviously. Um, and the very thing, first thing I did was dig up the class in 1947 Lucky Bag Yearbook, as many a midshipman in Naval History or HH-104 have, have done. Um, Stockdale was described as a party man at every hop, yet a conscientious worker during the week. That sounds to be a familiar theme at the Naval Academy. Lucky Bag is, of course, no secret. Bound to the library are also Stockdale's main publications, uh, which I had mentioned before, Love and War, Reflection of a Vietnam POW, as to be expected. Uh, up in Nimitz Library's archives and special collections are Stockdale's midshipman records on, on microfilm. As far as the Stockdale Center Mose, uh, these records are untapped. Uh, at this time, until released by the Stockdale family, his midshipman records will not be available until 2039 due to privacy laws and respect for the family. We had hoped to invite Admiral Stockdale's sons to the Naval Academy to collect the file, but it was uh, interrupted by the great pandemic. At a minimum, his uh, alumni jacket and several other record groups containing his materials are open to the public. Now, if you look to your right, uh, you'll see two other fellow POWs um, of Admiral Stockdale, uh, Dick Stratton and uh, Everett Alvarez. Um, the Naval Institute and in the years immediately after uh, the, Viet P or the POWs returned from Vietnam put together uh, an admirable collection of oral histories. Unfortunately, Admiral Stockdale himself was not included among them, but the first histories provide uh, excellent secondhand accounts. These include giants such as Senator Jeremiah Denton, Everett Alvarez, Dick Stratton and John Fellows. These oral histories can be found online or the transcripts up in the Nimitz Special Collections. Uh, if there's any librarians here, I, I would recommend a bound copy make itself into general circulation. Uh, also included at the Naval Institute are a series of preceding articles written by Admiral Stockdale and even his son, Jr. Next slide, please, Dr. McCreese. So now I'll talk about the Naval War College, our, our friends up in uh, Newport, Rhode Island. The War College is the exemplar Stockdale repository to date. It has a user-friendly digital finding aid and has several boxes worth of useful materials in a record group, the Stockdale record group. 
the majority of which are digitized, accessible within your browser. I'd recommend working with the War College for complete digitization or sending a history-trained officer there to gather the rest of the papers that we don't already have. Hot ticket items here include post-Vietnam materials, including a 150-page debrief of Admiral Stockdale's time in Hua La, correspondence with giants like Henry Kissinger, lectures on Arthur Kistler, the author of Darkness at Noon, uh, which famously, famously was used in uh, clandestine communication in and out of Hua La. Uh, also, my personal favorites were personal discussions with uh, uh, about the life of uh, Ivan Denisovich with Alexander Solzhenitsyn himself. I was able to uh, acquire the finding aid to five to six tangential record groups, uh, that is not Stockdale's papers, to find pertinent materials. This allowed me to create custom finding aids. And the spirit of a liberal definition of Stockdale, the papers of Joseph G. Brennan, uh, who succeeded him as the coordinator of the Stockdale course, are also there. Next slide, please. Next, we'll visit the Daniel Library at the Citadel in Charleston, another sister military academy. That Admiral Stockdale spent about a year here as president immediately after retiring from the Navy in 1979. Due to having different visions for the institution and other board members, Admiral Stockdale chose to relinquish his post. However, Admiral Stockdale still made an impact at the Citadel and brought an extensive paper trail with him. My experiences here epitomize the influence our little center has. I was able to coordinate with archivist uh, Ms. Tessa Updike and Ms. Alexandra Adler, if they, they're in the call, uh, the archivist. Um, and amidst the pandemic, they were able to bring, begin cataloging the Stockdale papers, preparing a finding aid, and even begin digitizing a portion of the collections, which we have already. Cannot thank them enough for their, their hard work and jump to assist a young ensign and greater academia. Highlights here include all sorts of Citadel school newspapers and magazines, a folder on Sybil Stockdale, addresses to the uh, cadets of West Point, and uh, flight maps. Perhaps while in power school as a hobby, I, I, I could take a look at some of the papers over here. Next slide, please. Finally, before I lose you all in the uh, monotony of record groups and descriptions of boxes of paper, I'll briefly describe the Hoover Institution on War, Revolution, and Peace. Currently, uh, it is the absolutely tantalizing repository for Stockdale and BOW historians as a whole. Both Sybil Stockdale and Admiral Stockdale are Stanford graduates and have separate archive record groups within the Hoover Institution. Of course, during the 80s and 90s, Admiral Stockdale was a research fellow and uh, produced most of his scholarly works here. Uh, I'm not sure if I mentioned, but currently the Sybil Bailey Stockdale papers are accessible to the public in a COVID free world, that is. Um, however, none of them are digitized. Fortunately, the Stockdale Center has acquired a finding aid listing the contents of her 13 standard boxes uh, easily on the Hoover Archives website. Uh, Miss Lee, who, who Heath Lee is on this call and uh, wrote the League of Wives, has actually visited. Uh, next slide, please. So I've talked a lot about finding aids and digital repository collections and search engines, uh, but this is what it actually looks like for non-historians. Um, it's just a list of the contents of folders and boxes of papers, and uh, it's important to look at. And this is uh, Sybil Bailey Stockdale's finding aid within the, the Hoover Institution. Uh, this is one of her most valuable finds. Uh, it wasn't hard to find, but it's still the most valuable because it describes every single source that's in the collection. The problem with the James B. Stockdale collection at Hoover, um, which makes up 60 of the 73 boxes that I mentioned, um, is that they're closed. Um, by far, it's the largest Stockdale collection in existence. Uh, it's truly a goldmine of material. Unfortunately, I can't even begin to tell you what is contained within the record group. Uh, it's currently uncatalogued, and uh, it doesn't have a public or private finding it at this time uh, due to current renovations at the uh, Hoover Institution. Hoover describes the papers as correspondence, memoirs, and other writings, personal records, and notes, um, and audiovisual material relating to the conditions in North Vietnam prison camps during the Vietnam War and to philosophy. Recently, the record group, as I mentioned, was closed to the public after uh, Admiral Stockdale's son's discerned material is inappropriate for public consumption, so it needs to be sorted through. The Stockdale Center has been in contact with the head of the North American Records at, at Hoover, Ms. Jean Cannon, who is in this call. She's been of tremendous help and is currently in the process of cataloging the record groups and begun preparing the material for the public. There have also been renovations to the Hoover Institution Library, which is delayed processing, um, as I mentioned. But the papers are ready to be opened by early 2021. So I'll switch it back to me. Um, give me a second here.
Thank you for uh, working the slides there, Dr. McCreese. So as I brought up these five locations of Stockdale papers, uh, there's many more out there. And uh, I haven't even mentioned my progress at places like the Vietnam Center in, in Lubbock, Texas. Um, the Naval History and Heritage Command aboard the Washington Navy Yard in, in D.C. is also extremely promising. And the fact is, some places were not able to function during COVID and others were not. Were And it, the only papers were currently missing are the uh, materials concerning the Ross Perot 1992 uh, ticket, which may be at uh, Hoover or we're not sure. So if you were interested in that today, I'm, I'm sorry, maybe next year. Um, of course, there's plenty of multimedia material related to the subject, television broadcasts that have been recorded, um, but there's not much in the way of written materials that I have. So the path forward, what can we do for the future of Stockdale history and future TADs, temporary officers at the Naval Academy and the Stockdale Center? So my major recommendations include, first and foremost, the Stockdale Center intends to distribute the research guide that I created uh, across all the different repositories we've interacted with using Stockdale Center funds. Even if an amateur historian stumbles across our guide at one repository, that will tap her or him into the Stockdale History Network. The second objective is to keep updating the Stockdale Center repository with information as we stumble upon it, uh, either from donations by family members or archival scans, whatever the, the source may be. Um, the drive is in place and we have an assignment for uh, history trained TAD officers and, and a COVID free world ready to go all the different institutions to physically visit. Finally, the single most effective course of action to promote Stockdale scholarship will be to coordinate with the Hoover Institution to digitize both the James B. Stockdale and Sybil Stockdale collection, if that's possible. Promoting open discourse and opening the Stockdale papers up to scholars for eternity is more a monument than any statue Felix de Welding could erect. Uh, this would allow open digital access to the largest collection uh, while eliminating a middleman. Hoover is the gold mine. If funding was available, such a proposition would establish a working relationship between the Hoover Institution and the Stockdale Center. A secondary option would be to send a history trained TAD officer out to Hoover to collect some non-professional scans or, or even to hire a private researcher. So if that will wrap things up, we're approaching the, the half hour mark here. And um, I hope you enjoyed seeing some of my products and uh, hearing about my research. And uh, thank you for all attending. And I'll turn it back over for Dr. McCreese and I'll prepare for questions. Well, Josh, uh, I, please accept our gracious thanks on behalf of all the staff of the Stockdale Center for the outstanding work that you've done. Uh, very few graduates of the Naval Academy immediately begin to use their specific major training that they've gotten. And for a history major to get a chance to work with authentic uh, source documents for three or four months uh, and produce a uh, reproducible and distributable uh, piece of work is really uh, a, a tremendous testament to the hard work that you've done. And, and we look forward to, to distributing that as you recommended. Uh, we've been lucky to have the superintendent of the Naval Academy here today. Uh, Amar Buck, do you have anything, uh, have anything to add before we open it up to uh, questions from the field? Well, first, uh, I'd like to echo your thanks, Dr. McCreese, to, uh, to Josh. Josh, well done. That was a very good use of your time for the greater good. Uh, the greater good of humanity who will over time have access to the scholarly work and thoughts of Admiral Stockdale. And I think that can only better all of us uh, by being able to continue to study him. So Josh, none of your time was wasted. And uh, I'm sorry you had such difficulty during a COVID-19 environment uh, I think we all sense right now that if you had not been constrained by COVID, you probably would have been able to truly dive into that deep end and uh, done so much more than you were able to do. Uh, you're always invited back to, uh, to re-energize your effort and or to continue to teach uh, future TAD ensigns or second lieutenants to follow in your footsteps, so thank you. Um, my comments to the Stockdale Center here at the Academy, well done. Uh, thanks for the continued pursuit, the continued efforts to, uh, to learn from Admiral Stockdale's uh, uh, scholar, scholarly work and thought. Um, and all of you all who are dialed in, in your respective ways, you've continued to improve this for all of it. So thank you. 
Right, well, thanks. Uh, thanks very much for joining us today, and thanks for the words uh, words of encouragement. We also have two members of the Stockdale family here, uh, Sid and uh, Jim Jr. Uh, Sid, I, I notice you here. Do you have any uh, any thoughts bef again before we open it up to the general group? Sir, I think you're on mute. Thank you. Uh, I'd just like to uh, pass along my personal thanks to Josh for all the great work he's done during the summer. I, I completely recognize the, the breadth of the project that you took on and it was very impressive. Um, and I wanna wish you all the best in your future endeavors here in the US Navy. Thanks very much, uh, Sid. And I saw Taylor Stockdale joined as well. Taylor, are you able to uh, come off mute? Do you have anything, uh, anything to add to the group? And while we're waiting for Taylor, Jim, uh, Jim Stockdale, how about you, sir? Yes, sir. Um, I, I, I don't know if I'm coming through or not, but it doesn't matter that much. I would simply like to say, jo thank you. Josh, thank you so much for your work. And I would add, uh, I, uh, uh, many on this call are, are familiar with this, but I would mention only that when I was at Hoover about seven, eight months ago and got a, a pretty stiff sneak peek at things, um, there is not a finder's guide, nor is the material organized. Evidently, the, the amount of effort at the archive that goes into that is dependent upon demand. And I'll simply, I'll, I'll, I'll simply mention that, that uh, this is from, I, I believe, if she's on the call here from Hoover, this could be validated. But there's a certain amount of, um, I guess, sort of institutional arm wrestling that goes on with this stuff. But that is, having gotten a sneak peek, a, a truly, uh, that's a vein of ore that warrants uh, further further consideration because it's a, a lot of boxes with a lot of, uh, a lot of different elements. Some of it I was glad to go through because it involved uh, some of some of the correspondence from post prison years was in there that might not be uh, best in the public domain. But otherwise, it's great stuff. And thank you, Josh, for all your work. Good luck at Nuke School. Uh, go get them. And, and thank you to the Stockdale Center and the Academy for their ongoing support of Dad and his work. Thanks. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you, Jim and Sid. And I, I see Taylor Stockdale attempting to come in and out. Taylor, if you're uh, if you're here, the floor is yours. Do you have any comments for Josh or anyone else in the room? If not, uh, any comments from anyone else in the uh, uh, in our chat room here today? Jeff, Joe Shriver here with Three Penny Films. Please, Joe. Yeah, so first of all, uh, I just want to thank Josh, uh, who's been collaborating with us and um, has just been a, a joy to work with and um, inspiring and uh, really helping move the project along. And And I know the question I'm about to ask, I know you, you have been limited um, by, as you call it, the great pandemic uh, in terms of what you can research at the Academy. But we're particularly interested in and how the Academy shaped James Stockdale as a leader. Um, the reverence for him from his fellow PLWs is off the charts. Um, it's humble reverence, um, almost like godlike in the way they describe him. So the question being, what have you been able to surmise from your research, whatever you've been able to do, about how the Academy shaped James Stockdale as a leader? So the first thing I, I, I want to talk about would be uh, how athletics influenced him. Now, I, I've seen all throughout the sources, uh, I've uncovered particularly uh, one source I remember in uh, the Citadel. There, there was an article penned by uh, the current athletic director over at the Citadel, and he talked about how the, the new president was big on sports and why it really influenced him as, a, as an officer and, and a man as a whole. I mean, since his earliest days in Abington, he's, he's got his hands in every sport. Uh, I mean, he's playing basketball in this yearbook. You, you find him on the football team, uh, even track and field hurdler. Uh, all, all these different things come together. And uh, particularly contact sports seems to be something he, he, he talked about a lot. Um, 
he, he, he joked about getting a deviated septum, which is uh, a, a, essentially a broken nose. And he said it was a character building experience um, <laughs> that he really attested his ability to take torture in Vietnam to that 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 rough upbringing. And it, it kind of reminds me how today at the Naval Academy, uh, all midshipmen plebes are forced to take boxing. And, and some people wonder why. Why boxing? We're, we're not all boxers. Naval officers don't don't fight. But it's not about that. It's about developing grit in naval officers for, for situations like this, unexpected when you're captured, um, and more general character building. Did that answer your question? Yeah, uh, Josh, that was that was terrific. Thank you. And Taylor Stockdale, I understand you're having uh, some technical problems there. Uh, if you have a question or comment, please feel free to put it in the in the chat box. How about uh, Heath Lee, uh, the author of League of Wives? Do you have anything uh, uh, to share with the group here, ma'am? Sure. Well, I just want to say Josh is like a rock star. He is amazing. He worked so hard. He was so diligent and thorough and found some sources I didn't know about either. So we're all trying to recruit him to go into history full time, but the submarines seem to be calling him. So I wish you could get him to come back somehow just to have that consistent memory. I think that's going to be the hardest thing about keeping this on track is having that consistent um, sort of historical memory. Um, but it's going to be hard to do better than this one. He really just did a top-notch job. So um, thank you, Josh. I think you've done wonderful, wonderful work and go get them on the subs. Well, we got uh, Professor Rick Ruth here, the former chair of the history department. I suspect that uh, Professor Ruth would support uh, an opportunity for Josh to come back as an instructor if that ever uh, worked out in his orders there. Uh, oh, absolutely. Yeah, I've actually learned a lot from him, even just sitting right here. So he's already started teaching. Uh, could I ask a question? Is that all right? Sure, Jeff? please. Professor hey, Josh, thanks a lot for doing this. And Jeff, thanks a lot for, for arranging this today. Uh, a lot of us are familiar with Stockdale on the line, and, and some of us m much more than others. But I, I found myself wondering, while you were looking at the materials, and I realized a lot of this was cataloging and, and identifying and, and, and not necessarily uh, a set project in mind, was there anything that jumped out at you that was unexpected, a nugget here and there that would excite a, a historian toward a future project? I'm not going to steal your idea, but uh, I found myself wondering if if there was anything uh, just sort of out of the blue that you thought, wow, I didn't realize this about him. You know, I, I thought I knew so much, so much about him, uh, but here's something that I hadn't considered before. So for a potential product or project, um, for if you're thinking like in the way of an honors history project, something like that, uh, I could see it going several routes. Uh, I didn't find anything that was like absolutely shocking or mind boggling or his criminal record or anything like that. Um, however, uh, the kind of stuff I'd focus on would probably be, uh, be uh, an intersection between a study of philosophy and history. Um, you could somehow work that in. Um, there was another piece that I remember I keep coming back to uh, the Citadel for some reason. It just stuck out of my mind because it, it was a new collection of sources. Um, what is worth resigning for? And he, he talks about about where his influences of resigning and uh, that sort of thing. Um, I mean, beyond that, there's all kinds of it crosses with English. He's a well-read man. I mean, that Arthur Kistler, uh, all the discussions with Sultan Neeson. I could imagine like maybe a, English history overlap kind of thing. Uh, hopefully that that puts some ideas down. Uh, <laughs> I, I, no, you you already have me thinking of, of good future projects for midshipmen, and I hope you can be uh, maybe even be an advisor if you do come back and join us. But no, yeah, it, it's whetted my appetite to go and, and look. This is Taylor. Can you hear me? Hey, Taylor. All hey. right. The floor, the floor is yours. <laughs> No, I don't have anything to say. I'm just really enjoying the conversation. I just, I'm really sorry. I, I'm a Zoom person. I've been on Zoom all morning. And so this is a big shift for me. But I did want to say that just as an aside, yesterday afternoon, um, I, got a, I got a note from the skipper of the USS Stockdale that they were coming back into San Diego. So I went out on a boat with a friend of mine and we waved him in. And it was one of the, one of the coolest uh, 
you know, moments uh, of pride, just seeing that big return with honor flag and the American flag. And um, another thing that was kind of fun is I took a bunch of photos, of course, I was up on the, as a small sailboat. And then the, the skipper took a photo of me from the bridge with like the, like I was in the crosshairs, you know? <laughs> and anyway, it's a classic shot of me up on the ship to, or up on the sailboat trying not to capsize. In any event, I think this is fantastic work and I'm just so proud and uh, I just love to hear um, everything going on. You mentioned Solzhenitsyn. I remember there was a letter that my dad received from him, I think. Jimmy or Sid can help me with that. Wishing him, welcoming him back from prison. Is that right? Yes, I, I think that may actually be at the War College as well. Um, oh, really? I, I've seen several um, notes of correspondence back and forth, but I was thinking more by his lectures uh, than, than anything else, but yeah. that back and forth for sure. Oh, I'm glad it ended up there. I know it was here in our house, and I didn't know what happened to it, so that's great. I'm glad it's safe. Thanks, Taylor. Uh, Michael McCann, you're, you're here from the Nimitz Library, and you're the uh, history rep or part of your portfolio or the, the history department uh, teachers there. Could you maybe talk a little bit about the importance of having finding aids and people who are sifting through sources to, uh, to a study of, of history? Uh, sure. Thank you very much, Dr. McCreese, and um, kudos to you, uh, Ensign um, Walton. I, I think you've done, an, as everyone has said, an incredible job getting this project started. Um, but I think it's important to, to know that it is just the start. Um, the amount of information that is out there uh, related to Admiral Stockdale um, is just an incredible amount of information. And we get contacted, uh, I, I think, as does the Stockdale Center, uh, pretty regularly for, for researchers both uh, throughout the Naval Academy, everything from, you know, um, midshipmen, plebes who are taking naval history and have to write a paper about uh, a, a naval leader that, you know, has had a tremendous impact on the history of the Navy and of the country as a whole, to you know, people working on PhD doctoral dissertations and biographies and book sources that just want to know more about Admiral Stockdale. And uh, you know, we can certainly direct them to any number of things that we have at the Nimitz Library that relate to his time uh, and experience as a midshipman. Um, as well as you know, many of his, his publications uh, and other materials that are located in the archives. But uh, it's, it really is just scratching the surface. There's, there's so much information to be had. And uh, as uh, Ensign Walton uh, has shown, uh, it is distributed in, in a number of different locations, libraries, archives, and so, there is no one single repository, as is often the case uh, with uh, you know, individuals. And so it's great that uh, the Stockdale Center, I think, is the appropriate place to, to really put together a definitive bibliography and guide uh, to where various uh, materials are located so that researchers have that much more access, ready access, uh, to these materials and can make use of them. Yeah, thanks, Mike. And, uh, you know, any historian who's done work in archives knows the critical role that librarians and archivists have in uncovering the story of, of uh, people who've influenced history. And, and we thank you for your support of uh, researchers here in the yard, including Josh and the other history honor students. Carol Grazer, you, you uh, were instrumental in, in pointing Josh to the childhood archives. Do you, do you have any... Uh, anything about that period in his life or maybe your connection to that remote part of Illinois that you want to share with the group? Carol, I'm sorry, you're muted. First of all, I want to say Josh and I've been working together a lot. And one of the striking characteristics of Josh is that when he is working with people in a small town or wherever, he has an amazing style. And I, he would copy me on his, his notes to Jim Fisher, who's the historian in Abingdon. Um, but my background is 
I grew up on a farm about 20 miles from Abingdon and our high schools played each other. And my mother went to Monmouth College about the same time. But um, it was when I came out here and lived in Annapolis and I started hearing more about Stockdale, I saw <laughs> that he was from Abingdon, Illinois. So last year, almost exactly this time of year, I went back to visit my sister and I said, let's go on a road trip to Abingdon. And we did, and we saw the memorial in Abington that has um, a slab there for, for your father and for his cousin. To have two Medal of Honor winners in this same really small town really piqued my curiosity about what about the early years made him be the stoic that he became. And so we went back on this, this track and we ended up in the local library in Abington and they gave us a lot of the yearbook information. They pulled out the yearbooks from when he was there. Oh then they introduced me to the local historian, right. Jim Fisher. I don't think Jim's on the call. I know he was invited. Um, and he did all of the copying and everything of all the yearbooks. And so it started giving a picture of a man, a young man who was into everything and excelled at everything and a leader all the way back to his freshman year in high school. And um, then uh, either Sid or Jim released to Joshua an essay their father had written when he was on the train going back to his father's funeral. And I have to tell you too, that was incredible to read. The way he described the Midwest, where he'd grown up, the impact of his mother okay. and his father because that really was where, for me, the story started to come together because his mother was, um, well, you guys can tell the story better, but you know, an, an, an intellectual and well-read and taught people how to do public speaking and all that kind of thing. And his father was the one who wanted to be sure he got into the academy. So according to this, this vignette that we read that I love, he really was trying always to be physically stronger to meet that expectation. So um, then I turned all of this over to Josh and he made friends in Abington and uh, you know, the, then in Monmouth, he's got the connection at Monmouth College and Knox College. And when you make connections in that part of the country, it takes a certain style for them to trust you. And they really started to trust him. And uh, Jim and Sid, that, uh, that um, story that your father wrote on the train to Galesburg from Omaha was incredible. I don't know if you've shared that with Joe Schreiber or anybody else, but it was an incredible story. Well, it, um, it, it was wonderful. Uh, it, that, that's a wonderful piece, and it's written in between the two Vietnam cruises. Uh, and uh, he was at the end of his squadron command cruise, and um, he was actually headed back early for a CAG workup. Um, carrier Air Group Commander Workup. And uh, that piece has rattled around the family for a long while, but it has always been the touchstone. And I will simply say, as you alluded, if you want a good key to dad's personality, his stoical nature, and his attempt to be into everything, his parents will be will be a wonderful guide. His mother was the English and drama teacher at the high school. And his father was the manager of the little pottery in that town where dad worked in the summers. And uh, he would carry big, the, the pottery originally made the plumbing fixtures for uh, railroad cars, for Pullman railroad cars. And dad would spend his summers uh, with the strong men, uh, many of them of Italian origin, first generation in Abingdon, uh, carrying hoddles, 200 pound hoddles around on his back from from the drying racks over to uh, the glazing center. So there's a lot there in that growing up that may be documented, maybe not, but you put your finger right on it. Um, he was, his parents were a huge influence on him and on that little town. Right, thanks, Tim. Th thanks for sharing. Uh, Dr. Jean Cannon, if we could maybe, I haven't met you yet, but uh, thank you for participating from the Hoover Institution. Um, we heard several times from, from uh, Ensign Walton that uh, the key unlocked um, 
uh, papers that haven't really been explored by scholars yet are those in the Hoover Institution. Would you mind giving us an overview of what you can tell us about what's in there and what the path forward for researchers might look like who want to explore more about the life and uh, professional career of Admiral Stockdale? Certainly. Yeah, I'd love to. And first of all, I want to say Josh has done such a marvelous job. I mean, if you ever want to step off the submarine and you're looking to uh, become an assistant curator, I've got a job for you. Um, <laughs> And I also, yes, I mean, the, the Stockdale Collection at Hoover is um, and wonderful, is wonderful, and I think eventually will be the source of uh, great research. Heath will have to come back and write 20 more books. Um, there, will be, there will be a great amount of interest in the collection, and I promise you that um, Taylor and Sid and, uh, and Jim and I are working to get that open and available for the public and fully cataloged so that it's easily searchable, um, hopefully in the near future. Uh, that will be the case. But the collection is very rich in that it has um, correspondence, um, documentation of, of Stockdale's life um, across many, many, many years, and also a lot of you know material about his scholarly work, which as, um, as Josh mentioned, there's probably a lot more um, academic research that will be done in that area. So um, I think that we will have a flood of researchers come um, the minute that it's, uh, that it's open. Um, and so, yeah, so it's, it's something that we're all uh, really looking forward to and ho hoping to see Josh in the reading room when, uh, when that happens. Hey, thanks, Dr. Cannon. Appreciate it. And then finally, there's one other person I'd like to direct a question to, and that's uh, Mr. Lewis Blandon. And Ms. Blandon, uh, when, when we started working with Three Penny Films on um, uh, doing some processing of the oral interviews, 50 hours of oral interviews of fellow POWs with uh, Admiral Stockdale, your name immediately came up as a must talk to person, uh, as someone who has one of the deepest knowledges, uh, or base of knowledge of, of the v Vietnam POW experience. Could I maybe ask you to, to reflect a little bit on, on Josh's work and, and what the path forward might be, uh, might look like for people who follow and Josh's footsteps, who are trying to compile uh, yeah. this ongoing collection of, of materials? Yeah, absolutely. Nice work, Josh, by the way. Um, Josh and I exchanged around two dozen emails, I think. Um, he had the, what he didn't have a chance to talk about was the other sources than the Hoover Institute and places like, like the Library of Congress, uh, the, the um, NARA, and not only NARA and College Park, but the other NARA facilities, they may have materials um, on on. Stocksdale and the other POWs. Also, there's other sources we discussed. Um, Vanderbilt Television News Archives has a complete collection of all news, mostly major news like ABC, NBC, CBS, all news um, shows from 1968 to the present. We use those extensively for the documentary we did on Jer Jeremiah Denton. Uh, a lot of interviews we were able to get of the wives and for Denton and some of the POWs. That's another source I mentioned to Josh that might be a good source to um, to go after. And that includes the um, ABC Universal Archives, which I, they're now with Getty, I think. Um, that's another source. Um, historical uh, Association. Uh, Lewis, we're having latency yeah, with you here. Me. I apologize. Um, Historical societies are another crucial uh, component for all the POWs. They sometimes give their papers. The Library of Congress has the Veterans History Project, where there's tons of oral histories dating back from World War I to the present, where they were able to tape. Mostly these are local people who tape veterans, and there are several POWs whose interviews are there, are located there. Also, I was, when I was talking to Josh, I always found searching newspaper databases uh, very important. You'll find stories that you will not be finding in the if that, you, that will not be published in major newspapers. Um, I did this. I just did a story of a, of a professional baseball player, who uh, most of the stuff I was able to get came from the little newspaper where he was born and, and grew up in the 1910s. So, that's in your papers, and we're happy that your work is going to be able to be put to uh, to good use in the in the future. Yeah. Uh, as someone who spent some time in the history stacks myself, I'd be remiss if I didn't say that uh, history is constantly being rewritten. Uh, archives are always being uncovered, new letters and new collections are always being discovered, and that new interpretations based upon what the society of the, of the day appears to be important 
they're constantly being changed. And so what Josh has done has been to uh, uncover a new page in history, and we hope that other scholars who follow after him will continue in their work. So thank you all for joining us again on behalf of all the uh, members of the Stockdale Center for Ethical Leadership at the U.S. Naval Academy. We thank you for your time, and we hope that all of you will look to the lessons that the POWs in Vietnam uh, uh, provide for us as how to return with honor and maintain a sense of, uh, of dignity, uh, compassion, and hard work in the face of, um, of terrible situations. Those are lessons that Admiral Stockdale provided to us and we continue to provide and follow uh, in the future. So from uh, Loose Hall in Annapolis, uh, thank you again. And uh, we hope that you'll uh, continue to uh, engage in reading of Admiral Stockdale and the Vietnam POWs. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.